I think we all know what is our current greatest vulnerability and sometimes our greatest current vulnerability is something that isn't just current but it's been going on for years and for myself I I would say my my biggest vulnerability right now and for the last couple of years has been symptoms of CPTSD and I shared in another video I'll link it into the description if you haven't watched it I talk about a, a violent experience that I had a couple of years after my near-death experience in my car accident and this was a couple of years ago now but after that violent event I I developed some pretty severe symptoms of PTSD and although I've done you know some trauma healing and I've been in therapy and and I continue to do everything that I know to do and I've learned how to navigate with the symptoms a lot better than at the beginning it's still a thing that's there and a lot of times when we're doing our self-help work maybe on a spiritual path we wrongly think that we need to completely eradicate and erase our vulnerabilities in order to move forward properly and this couldn't be farther from the truth this couldn't be farther from the truth our greatest vulnerability greatest vulnerabilities are are so many things one of which they are a constant reminder to us of the fact that our ego does not have it all figured out you know we can be sailing through life and and thinking okay I got this figured out I got that figured out this is okay whatever and if we go too far into that without any vulnerabilities we can start thinking that we actually have it all together and when we actually have it all together and if we think that we're perfect we become very unrelatable we become very people who, who aren't really able to understand other people who are stuck thank goodness <laughs> by by laws of uh, divinity another vulnerability should sink in soon if we start to think that way we have the option when we're face to face with our greatest vulnerability to shove it into the closet, sink into an addiction, um, try and distract ourselves, or we can fall into the arms of grace. We can put a full stop in the middle of whatever's come up for us in that great vulnerability and close the door to our room and lie on our bed and take a deep breath and fall literally letting go of our muscles letting go of the tension in our face saying wow I really don't have this figured out the ego does not have power over this vulnerability it's too big and we can settle into the arms of God we can settle into the fact that we're going to be carried through and we're going to get to where we need to go even if we have this vulnerability. The ego, which provides us a nice structure to get through life, a personality, um, instincts, all these things that help keep us safe and, and give us a vehicle for perceiving what's going on around us, it has massive limitations. It does those things that I just mentioned but it doesn't have the forward insight, the connection to the synchronicities of nature, the connection to divinity, in order to get us to where we need to go. It has its limitations. And when we are face to face with our vulnerabilities, we are reminded, the ego, the ego piece gets a, a reminder that it is not God and it does not know everything. And so another thing that our vulnerabilities do is they, if we're face to face with them and we're able to look them in the eye and just see them for what they are, vulnerabilities, they're not who we are, 
their existence and their presence helps us to not identify and attach too much to our body and our personality. And in that way, when we do die and we do leave the earth, we're not going to be super, super attached in the way that we might be if we didn't have those vulnerabilities. Having those vulnerabilities is this kind of um, this friction that's always there in the background reminding us that this is an experience, being here on earth, but it's not our true home. That friction is a reminder that something is a little, little off. We're not in our home vibration and our, own, our home frequency. If we didn't have that friction, we might actually go deeper into our forgetfulness, go deeper into our illusion in this earth dream and start to think that this is the greatest thing there is and this is all there is. And I think if anyone's watching this and they've gone through periods of time where they've had, you know, everything is just working out great for them. They've got the greatest partner. They've got great wealth. They've got great health. It's just all going so great. That's really wonderful. But we also, if we're in that mode, especially for too long, we can attach so deeply to the earth experience in the human body that when it is time to die and it is time to leave the body, we are totally not prepared and not connected to the other side because we've connected so deeply to the, the entrapments that are here. We have to see them for what they are. And so our vulnerability, this, this difficult, uncomfortable friction that sometimes never seems to go away, that keeps us from settling too deeply here and forgetting our, our need to trust and our need to fall into the arms of God. Our vulnerabilities also provide us a connection to other people. For example, if you've been someone who has been in AA or NA and you've, you've been in um, addiction recovery, your greatest asset, as far as human beings are concerned, is going to be your sponsor somebody who has walked the path of addiction recovery and still knows deep down that there's that tendency for addiction that is alive deep within. People who haven't experienced addictions or addiction recovery are going to be less able to understand you on that journey. And so whatever it is that vulnerability we have, when it's understood and it's accepted and we learn to harness it a little bit, it will be what helps us to understand and support others that might come to us along the way who have who've got the same type of vulnerability. On top of that, no one really likes to read myths or fairy tales or, you know, stories about heroes from holy scriptures who walk around perfect with no vulnerabilities. Those stories don't really draw us in. On the hero's journey, the hero often is someone who has great vulnerabilities and they set out on their path anyways. And yeah, those vulnerabilities often draw them into great danger and to the wrong people. And we see time and time again the hero of every story needing to fall into the grace of other human beings, the grace of the spirit world, finding support because their vulnerability got them somewhere where they couldn't get out of themselves time and time again. And that is their strength. They're knowing that they can't get through everything all alone, that they need to ask for help, and help does show up when they do let go and they do surrender and they they recognize that they don't have it all figured out, that the vulnerability is big, sometimes bigger than we can really imagine. But then as we watch these people go through their story, sometimes their vulnerability doesn't even fully go away, even by the end of their life or by the end of the story. But they learn how to work with it. They learn how to put one foot in front of the other, accept that it's there, and realize that they can still make it to their goal, 
with that vulnerability alongside of them, and they learn to harness it. Some people call it riding the dragon. And in the Western culture, we're not taught too much about doing that. You know, we don't have... We don't have rituals. We don't so much have elders. We don't have these things that um, maybe guided us in the old times or that guide people in other parts of the world where they still have those um, structures set up. And so we need to go back to these basics of seeing our vulnerability as our, our key to returning over, our reminder to return over and over again to grace, to prayer, to surrendering. And in that way, we reconnect with the divine every time and over and over again. And so, yeah, I can only speak from my own story, but I believe that sharing about our vulnerabilities only makes us more real and only makes us more human. And having symptoms of CPTSD uh, that roll in from time to time, sometimes in a big way for me, causes me to socially withdraw, sometimes push other people away without even realizing I'm doing it, needing to spend plenty of time grounding and settling and resting my nervous system before I'm up for something else, causes irrational fears to pop up where there's really um, nothing going on. <laughs> and if you've, if you've had symptoms of CPTSD, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And bless you, by the way. And as much as I uh, sometimes want to run far away from these things, today I'm just feeling the gratitude of um, falling into the grace of God. Being reminded that my, my ego definitely does not have this figured out and hopefully never does hopefully never does hopefully when these things show up time and time again in my life I, I return return again and again and, and fall into the arms of God ask for support and surrender whatever your vulnerability happens to be this day this week this year it's your key your key to being real, your key to connecting with divinity, your key to going home. You can let go into that. You can let go into that. Let your ego be surprised. Allow it to be shaken up. It's one day we're leaving this body. One day when we go to the spirit world and we die, we're leaving this body. We're going to leave the ego. We're going to leave it behind. And we're going to soar. And we want to be ready to go. We want to be ready to, once again, for real, <laughs> it's all for real, but um, when we leave this body in death, we want to be able to fall into the arms of the divine at that time too. So let's practice now. Every time your vulnerability shows up, it's a great practice for our actual physical death one day. <laughs>